we have our first guest and final clip of the day. We have Andy joining us. Andy, how are you, man? All the way from Vegas, as I mentioned. How are yeah. you, man? Hey, guys. Yeah, you say it gets up to 118 in Vegas. That's cool. Not cool, yeah, man. Do you, do you go, out of, do you go outside in that, Andy? I mean, it's just whatever. I'm from here, so it's just, it's just it is what it is. Yeah, man. Um, so we have gotten into the off season. Let's talk about it, man. The Vegas Golden Knights and my Florida Panthers, man. The <laughs> Vegas Golden Knights edged out the Florida Panthers in the Stanley Cup Finals. You know, Vegas has had a great season, but how would you describe that moment as a fan winning the first Stanley Cup in Vegas history? You know, um, I mean, every every time there's a championship, people say similar things. Like it felt like destined from the moment the season started everything lined up the way it should have gone the timelines were all there or you know the the story elements were all there it all just seemed to to just wrap up for Vegas so when it got to the finals it really felt like they weren't going to get denied this time so I was out there I was out for game five we're in front of the plaza like 12,000 people out front just the mood of the people inside the arena, outside the arena, it was going to end that night. And it was, you know, it's a great experience because as a sports fan, I've watched very bad baseball teams for a very long time. The Arizona Diamondbacks have been just completely trash outside of a couple of, like, a couple of random seasons. pretty good this season, though. Yeah, but, you know, as a Diamondbacks fan, I'm naturally skeptical of that. We haven't made the postseason in consecutive years since 2001 and 2002. Over 20 years since they've made the playoffs twice in a row. So we'll see how it goes this year. I think the team's a little too young to really make noise, but we'll see how that goes. I mean, um, so let's talk about the Golden Knights for a minute. Yeah. You know, obviously Logan Thompson got injured, um, I think halfway through the season, maybe more than halfway through the season, Aiden Hill comes in. Um, mm-hmm. He has a great postseason lead, y'all, to the first Stanley Cup, as I mentioned. Um, how do you think Aiden Hill took over for Logan Thompson? How do you think that – like, how do you think that went? Well, the, that really goes back to before the season started because even going back to last year because we had Robin Leonard as our starter and Laurent Rossois as the backup. And coming into this season – We had learned that Robin Leonard was going to need, well, hip surgery on both of his hips. So he was going to be out for the remainder of the season. But we had no problem with Logan Thompson being the starter at that point because he had pretty well taken the starter's role from the end of the 2022 season. And with Laurent Brossois, he also started the season on the injured list. So when Laurent Brossois went down, that's when Vegas had acquired Aiden Hill. So... To me, Aiden Hill was never like the third or fourth starter for Vegas. He was always the backup. He was always he was always positioned to be that backup because if we start the season with Logan Thompson as the starter, Aiden Hill with the other two down was picked to back him up. Now, if those two came back, as we saw with Brossois, they had figured some things out, but things lined up the way they did. And by the time Brossois was ready, Logan Thompson was injured, which allowed – uh, Aiden Hill to bump into that starter role. And then, of course, Hill goes down, Brossois goes down. All of a sudden, Jonathan Quick is on the team. And before you know it, it's the playoffs. So it's just been a, you know, a chaos set of goals. Yeah, I just want to say this uh, before I hang you over to Evan for his yeah. question. Um, the first six seasons, I have followed the Golden Knights all six seasons. I think the Golden Knights are the first They've had a lot of different goalies yeah. for their first six seasons. You know, Oscar Gantz, um, Logan Thompson, Jonathan Quick. They've had a lot of goalies. Robin Leonard, Rashua, um, five goalies. So I'll hang over to Evan for his question. Okay, first of all, I went to Vegas' stadium uh, earlier this year. I've only been to two NHL stadiums, one in Nashville and then one in Vegas. I got to say, Vegas is my new favorite now. So a um, lot of fun there. But my, my question kind of goes based on what Jake said. You know, you won you won the Cup. You've been in the West Finals four of six years, which is remarkable uh, for a new team. 
you know, you had three guys on offense, especially the offense with Vegas was great too. Three guys with 25 plus goals. What I wonder is obviously it's been sustainable to, you know, go deep in the playoffs. How sustainable do you think it is now that, um, you know, you're going to win championships? Because I think the NHL does a good job of betting teams. It's not, you don't get magical runs all the time because the, the playoffs are two months long. You got to grind it out, you know. Um, do you think this is sustainable to win another championship? Maybe not next year, hopefully next year for you, but um, at least in the next couple of years, do you see trophy number two coming? You know, I think that it can. Vegas has positioned themselves very well. They've staggered their cap situation. So as players come off of the cap, new ones are going to be included onto it. And the way they built their roster is it's all depth. And you guys saw that in the playoffs. Vegas could roll all four lines. They had three scoring lines plus their fourth line checking line. And that fourth line was also dangerous when it came to scoring. Granted, we've lost Riley Smith. So that might allow Nicholas Watt to bump on up. But that would give opportunities for younger guys. Like we have Pavel Derafia, who came out really strong in the ending part of the season. I think he had six or seven goals himself. And you have Michael Amadio. He was like a 16 or 17 goal scorer only playing 60 games and he um he'll be positioned to be more of an everyday guy and then of course you have paul cotter so vegas they've really built their lineup middle down <clears throat> they've got eichel and then they've got stevenson then they've got carlson then they put a regular winger with each one of them and then they put a depth forward with the remainder so it's all just positioning the team to really move forward and not rely on two top heavy lines. All right, Angie. So we appreciate you coming on, man. We're going to let you go. We're going to let you go. Enjoy the rest of your night. Um, thanks for coming on, man. Congratulations. Right, thanks so much for having me.